uh, I did what, what one would do is you take all the stuff back um, for taxonomic identification. You look in the literature to see if there's any reports and what it might have. It was a mix of a plethora of ingredients, everything from, you know, snakes and dried toads and uh, various plants and, and, and then these curious fish. While Alex arranges a meeting with a new Bocor, I decide to see if I can find the ingredients Davis described on my own. You know, I identified the plants and the amphibians, and I finally went around to the fish guys. I found this ichthyologist sort of literally with his head sort of inside this big jaw of a, some massive fish he was counting the teeth of or something. And he, and he literally reached up and pulled from his shelf between these dusty volumes of the Journal of Ichthyology, a copy of Ian Fleming's uh, James Bond book from Russia with Love, one of those early books in the James Bond you know, saga, um, 007 gets kicked in the shin and he dies. And then he turns back alive in the next book. That's how the guy uh, in the lab introduced me to the fact that I had really landed on something. The pufferfish is a marvel of evolution and biomechanics. Its internal organs contain one of the most potent neurotoxins ever discovered. It is the TTX in the pufferfish which induces the total body flaccid paralysis, almost indistinguishable from death. This simple identification of the fish suddenly took the whole zombie investigation from the realm of, of the phantasmagoric into the realm of the conceivable. The fish that were used in the poisons uh, had a very interesting molecule uh, in their viscera, in their liver, in their ovaries, and on the surface of the skin. And this was a neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin, which is a complex molecule. It's about 160,000 times more potent than cocaine as an anesthetic. It's about 1,000 times more toxic than potassium cyanide. It, um, a lethal dose of the pure molecule would balance in the head of a pin. But more interesting than the sheer toxicity was the way that it killed. And we knew the poison could do just what was necessary. It, it mechanically blocked sodium channels in the nerves, which brought on um, peripheral pr paralysis, dramatically low metabolic rates, and yet consciousness was retained until the moment of death. Okay. Fishes wow. shot with a spear gun and pulled out of the water. The entry wound is close to the brain, with an exit wound in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Much to my astonishment, when it's pulled out of the water, it begins to inflate itself, despite the two gaping holes in its body. How is this possible? I tentatively identified the fish as Diodon hystrix, a species so poisonous that people have been hospitalized from merely touching the spines. The fish that I found in Haiti uh, being used in these 
preparations were members of a pan-tropical order of fish called the Tetratodontiformes, which also include the famous fugu fish of Japan, the culinary delicacy. For centuries, or certainly for generations, uh, specially trained chefs have been preparing these toxic fish. They carefully eliminate the toxin so that the person can enjoy the non-toxic fillets of the fish. The real role of the, of the fugu chef is not to eliminate the toxin altogether, but to reduce it to the extent that the connoisseur still enjoys the effects of a mild intoxication, which include waves of euphoria, tingling sensation. It's one of the few substances that walks the fine line between food and drug. Sounds like there's sort of like a like a biphasic thing where it's like it starts out with the TTX poisoning and then after then they're given scopolamine or atropine. So we've talked, for example, about the tetrodotoxin, but then what's fascinating is that by all accounts, as a zombie comes back around, he is fed the paste of concon zombie, the zombie's cucumber. Now this is based on datura, and it is includes, of course, these propane alkaloids, scopolamine and atropine. Davis hypothesized that the chemicals in the zombie cucumber were used to keep the zombie in a state of submissive confusion. There's one right there. But I'm not so sure this is Datura stramonium. In fact, it looks strikingly similar to Marinda citrifolia, or noni, a non-psychoactive fruit which can be bought in health food stores across America. Oh, it has to be older? Yeah. This would be the perfect drug to kind of socialize the individual into a new state of kind of uh, psychosis, if you will. These are powerfully active drugs. They bring on a state of induced psychotic delirium, visions of hellfire, a burning thirst, um, a sensation of flight. Uh, these are the drugs of choice of every black magician and sorcerer throughout the world. And they create a kind of a psychic dislocation that uh, is described invariably by anyone who takes the drug as being incredibly terrifying. After the preparation, which consists of a despining and crude hepatectomy, the remaining organ meat is scrambled, salted, and served on a silver dish. There was this enormous literature on just what these fish could do to you. Turns out, by folk custom in Japan, if you succumb to fugu fish, you're laid on the ground for several days to make sure you're really dead. And there are case after case after case in the literature and in the newspapers of Japan of people nailed into their coffins by mistake. On this dish is a species of puffer which is known to be poisonous. In October, a season where the fish is known to contain deadly quantities of TTX, yet nobody around me seems concerned in the slightest. The meat is chewy, and I'm delighted to say tastes almost indistinguishable from chicken. At the time, no one really understood the biogenesis of the toxin within the fish. There was a tremendous amount of variability, and we knew that 50% of the time, these fish were not toxic at all. But what was fascinating is that um, this meant that at least 50% of the time, these toxins would be ineffective pharmacologically. So what's going on here? Well, that, that really turned out to be the key to the puzzle. Every, every drug, in a sense, particularly hallucinogenic drugs, you know, they have an absolutely neutral potential for good or evil, an ambivalent potential, and that everything depends on the, the cultural matrix in which the, the drug is used. Ask them if there's zombies in the building behind us. Hmm? 
Esse cabo morreu, o tal é Zé do MBIA. Quando é bem, olha para ele. 